from Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here I am doing another television show. And I want to tell you something. I will never again take a bus to the studio as long as I live. Particularly uh, during the rush hour. I mean, it's always so crowded, you know, and people are, are pushing and shoving and pressing up against you. And of course, ordinarily, I wouldn't mind it, but when you have a tomato sandwich in your pocket, it's murder. <laughs> I don't want to give you the impression that I always carry my lunch to the studio just to save money, because that isn't it at all. It's just that right now I happen to be on a very strict diet, you see, and it seems that uh, every time I gain a pound or two, it always settles right here. <laughs> oh, it isn't noticeable now, because, you see, I have a makeup man who used to be a tailor, and he put a pleat in the back of my neck. <laughs> I mean, not with a needle and thread. He, he used scotch tape. <laughs> If during the show, my necktie should suddenly disappear, you'll know that the tape broke. <laughs> of course, I'm not too concerned about my gaining weight because that happens to almost everybody who, who reaches my age. Uh, fortunately, I happen to be the type man uh, whose psychological outlook uh, permits him to grow older gracefully. Gracefully meaning that I have stemmed the tide, but there's a leak in the dike. <laughs> of course, weight has been a problem with a lot of people, and particularly my announcer, Don Wilson. Now, there's a man who is really overweight. He, uh, I must tell you a secret about him, his wife, a secret that his wife told me. He, he stepped on the bathroom scales the other day to weigh himself, and it, it showed that he had lost 40 pounds. See, and Don was so happy about it that she didn't have the heart to tell him that his stomach was resting on the wash basin. <laughs> of course, I've always envied uh, people who can eat anything they want to and still... and not, and not worry about it. As a matter of fact, I read in the paper the other day where... Uh, a man who was on a very, very strict diet. I mean, for years and years, all he could eat was, oh, maybe some crackers and milk or a little toast or a piece of celery. And then all of a sudden, one night, he sat down and ordered the most tremendous meal you've ever seen. I mean, he ordered, he ordered uh, steak and, and turkey and mashed potatoes and and strawberry shortcake and ice cream and four different kinds of pies. And he just stuffed himself and didn't worry about it at all. The sad part of it is that 20 minutes later, they executed him. <laughs> of course, one person who doesn't have to worry about his way, that's Rochester. You see, Rochester has worked for me now for, oh, I'd say over 18 years. and. It's wonderful the way he keeps in such good shape. That's because he's so active in sports. I mean, sports like, uh, oh, sweeping and dusting and mopping and scrubbing. He's always so busy. Now, for instance, uh, take yesterday. I was uh, rehearsing my show over at the studio while Rochester was home, as usual, busy with the housework. Mr. 
makes three. Ah! That's right, Tommy. Just the three of us. Well, I'll pack in the furniture and then I'll go out in the kitchen and clean the floor. No, 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 no. Clean the floor. Clean the floor. Ah! Quiet, Molly. Ah! I'll do it when I get out in the kitchen. Ah! Clean the floor. Clean the floor. I said I'll do it. When... Clean the floor. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Clean the kitchen floor, I'll straight up that desk and then I'll be through. I may not clean the house off in but... <laughs> Take it easy, Polly. Take it easy now. Settle down. It was an accident. <laughs> Dust under that table. trouble with the commercial, but Don Wilson said he'd stay there and fix it up. <laughs> Hello, Polly. Out the front. Out the front. <laughs> what? Out the front. <laughs> Why should I count the fruit? I don't care if Rochester took a... A banana? <laughs> Say, Rochester, speaking of food, how about fixing me some dinner? Oh, I've got it all fixed, boss. I'll bring it right in. Good, good. Rochester, was there any mail? Yes, sir. You'll find it on the desk. Chester? Yes, sir? Here's a fan letter I got about my last show from a Harvard professor. From a Harvard professor? Yeah. Here, Mr. Benny. Rochester. Yes, sir. Did you know that execrable means lousy? <laughs> it does. Your food is ready. Good, good. I'm hungry. Hey, that looks good. Hey, did you make these yourself? No, those are popovers from the bakery. Oh. Hey, what about this? Leftovers from Tuesday. Now, wait a minute, Rochester. I happen to know that last Tuesday, we had lamb stew and spare ribs. Uh, and this is a lamb chop. I took the meat out of the stew, dried it in the sun, glued it on the rib, and put a patty on it. <laughs> you certainly could have fooled me. Rochester, you didn't throw out the rest of the stew, did you? Oh, no. 
See these? Olives? Green peas, I pumped them up. Well, what do you know? What would you like for dessert? Nothing. I'm so tired, I'm just going to eat this, and then I'll go to bed. Yeah. I put your pajamas on the bed. I'm running your bed. some pajamas, watch it, will ya? <laughs> Boss, I think they're beautiful. A little conservative, but beautiful. <laughs> Look, uh, forget about the bat. I'm just gonna brush my teeth and go to bed. Okay. Gee, I wish my eyes weren't so blue. They pick up lint. <laughs> well, I'm ready for bed. Boss, I was just looking at this sweater of yours. Oh, yes, you know, that brings back memories of Waukegan High School. Boss, well, there's something I've been meaning to ask you for a long time. What's that? Why is this sleeve shorter than that one? Oh, well, I, I graduated before I finished knitting it. <laughs> oh, this bed looks good. I'm gonna fall asleep the minute I hit the pillow. Well, I'll turn out the light. Okay. Good night, boys. Good night, Rochester. <laughs> so tired after a long rehearsal. I really need a good night's sleep. again.
told you a thousand times to fix that dripping faucet. I fixed it. Oh, yeah? Well, listen. <laughs> yeah. All right, you can go. Good night, boss. Good night, good night. It starts dripping. Rochester, I've got an idea. <laughs> Good night, boys! Good night, Rochester! I'm so wide awake now, I can't fall asleep. Now, Ron says there's only one way that I'll be able to fall asleep, and you're, you're just going to have to do it, that's all. Oh, boss, that's so much trouble. Trouble or not, I've got to get my sleep. Now, go ahead and do it. All right. Rochester, I, I didn't take a Dramamine. See the size of the mother and father. This is a pretty fancy joint. I'll bet you we'll do good in here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Lefty, Lefty, come here. Silver ass tray. Everybody. Just lay it down. for no thing. Hey, I'm gonna look and see what's in these drawers. What happened? I don't know. Stand aside. Hey, look at these beautiful sights. Hey, you know something? I think this job is gonna be all right after all. Let's go. Don't look at me. So, wanna look and see what's in them other drawers? No. <laughs> John, 
You know that banks is easier? Sure, that correspondence course we took didn't tell us about places like this. <laughs> hey, Joe, I'm going to see what's in here. but none as execrable as this one. <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, I know there must be a safe around here someplace. Let's look for it. Huh? All right, let's look. Come on. You sure be right here, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and there we are. I'll have this tin can open in three seconds. All right. Get me the phone. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the number of the police department. I'll get information. Information? Oh, I'd like the number of the police department, please. Yes, sir. The Hollywood Police Department is Hollywood 33449. Oh, no. Uh, no, operator. I want the Beverly Hills Police Department. I'm sorry, but that's an unlisted number. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this concludes another program. And now I would like to ask the burglars to come out and take a bow. <laughs> I really didn't want to ask them to take a bow, but uh, I had to. You see, nowadays, even burglars have a union. <laughs> so again, thanks very, very much. And good night, everybody.